let's begin with just a moment of silence to center ourselves, to kind of let the outside world as much as possible, dogs and cats and other critters and things like that. Um, let that go and prepare ourselves for worship. Stacy, if you could share the order of worship here. And now my screen has gone blank. <laughs> ah, here we are. Holy One, oil the hinges of our heart's doors, that they may swing gently and easily to welcome your presence. Saba. And I invite the congregation to join in the bold print. In the presence of God, whose word has called us into being. We stand in awe. In the presence of a God whose arms have held children, whose eyes have sparkled with laughter, we stand in trust. In the presence of God whose breath has stirred within us and caused our hearts to thirst for love, we stand in need. <clears throat> Before you, before of life, we come in faith, in search of love and truth and wholeness. Be with us, hear us, we pray. Our gathering song, Here I Am to Worship. Can you hear me? Yes, we can.
cause to see my sin upon that cross I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross to worship here I am to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance, awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Our first reading today is from Isaiah 55, 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in your rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sorry, I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Next we'll read Psalms 145, 8 through 9, and 14 through 21. I will read the light print if you could read the bold print. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. And his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord upholds all who are falling. And raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him. But all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. And all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. 
you would join in singing the gospel acclamation. gospel according to Matthew the 14th chapter Jesus has just experienced the loss of his cousin John the baptizer uh, who was beheaded by Herod and now when Jesus heard this he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself but when the crowds heard it they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left of, over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full, and those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. This is a familiar story. It appears in all four Gospels, along with a similar feeding of 4,000 that occurs in the next chapter in Matthew, and it also occurs in the Gospel of Mark. Being able to provide bread, especially to a large crowd, was not only a powerful physical feat, but it also was a sign of political strength. The Roman leader power who could provide bread for the masses through a robust economy held great political power. So Jesus feeding 5,000 men, let alone the women and the children, was not only a demonstration of God's power and generosity at work in him, it also sent a message to the leaders in both the spiritual and political realms. The context of this story, the beheading of John the Baptist, was connected to Herod wondering about the growing power and influence of Jesus in both the Jewish and Roman worlds. There always has been, and probably always will be, hunger of some sort in our world. Jesus did say that we will always have the poor with us. But that's becoming more and more of an issue and a challenge for leadership of all kinds in our world today, political and religious and other kinds. So what can this story teach us in the 21st century? It's important to pay attention to the details, not only as parts of the narrative, but as metaphorical jumping off points for wondering and imagination. Jesus wanted to get away by himself, most likely to grieve the death of his cousin and ministry partner, John the Baptizer, as well as assess the next steps in his own ministry. But the needs of the crowd pressed in on him, quite literally, as well as figuratively. 
Isn't that the case in our world too? The coronavirus is enough by itself, but it impacts almost every other aspect of our lives right now as well, and we can't get away from it. The economy and our schools are deeply affected, and that leads directly to a lot of hungry moms and dads, kids and grandmas and grandpas. The social safety net is more visible than ever and strained. The disciples come to Jesus with their assessment of the situation. Jesus is their leader, so they're looking to him for answers, for confirmation maybe of their assessment or possibly redirection. To whom are we looking for answers today? They suggest that the disciples suggest that Jesus simply tell the crowds to go away and fend for themselves. Sound familiar? And Jesus' response, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. All this last week, that phrase has lingered in my mind and in my heart. You give them something to eat. Jesus wasn't looking to show off and demonstrate a great magical miracle. Jesus wanted his followers to wrestle with the need of their fellow human beings and find the abundance that God provides. What so often is our response? There's not enough. We only have five loaves and two fish. In John's gospel, that's a boy's lunch. Hold up that boy's lunch over against five to 10,000 people sitting on the grass in front of you. And what would your response be? Jesus calls for what they have, the five loaves, the two fish, lifts them up to be blessed, and then gives them to the disciples to start distributing. What happens next? We all assume that the loaves and fishes start miraculously multiplying in the disciples' hands. God provides, as the psalmist said, you open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. But I wonder, could there be another miracle at work? Some have imagined that as Jesus and his disciples began sharing what they had, other people followed suit and started sharing what they had. It isn't hard to imagine that as families set out to listen to Jesus that day, seeking healing and guidance, that more than a few moms packed food for their families before they left home. Maybe you're one of those moms, or maybe you're married to one of those moms, or maybe you're the child of one of those moms. Look at the abundance that the earth provides. I've seen a, a couple, I guess they're called public service announcements, maybe a commercial. Uh, one is a food truck serving meals with food that was destined to be thrown out, blemished, imperfect things. And people are amazed that these are delicious meals could be served out of stuff that was gonna go into the garbage. Or there's another one where the doorbell keeps ringing these people's homes and a meal is brought in based on around zucchini. And I think they use not only the zucchinis, but the ends that were cut off. They use the leaves, they use the stems, they use even the flowers of the zucchini. Maybe the miracles we need to be praying for are the miracles of imagination and sharing. The USDA research estimates that 30 to 40% of food in America is wasted. How many people could be fed if we simply paid more attention to buying and using our food more fully and efficiently? And what about the miracle of sharing instead of hoarding 
or accumulating more than we need. They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And we're seeing that happening as people are working together to share farmers' crops that are wasting away because the markets have collapsed. Other people are banding together and taking it upon themselves to find food and, gi and give it to the hungry, out of work folk. What does this community of disciples do what does Shepherd of the Valley do? What have you done in the past and what are you doing now? And I invite people to, to share a little bit about what you do because you're the ones that know it better than me. And there we are. So if you can unmute yourself, anyone that knows about what you do as a congregation uh, to feed hungry people and to meet the needs that are out there. Would you, would you speak? Someone want to say something about brighter summer? I'll talk about, I'll brighter, talk summer. about brighter summer. Um, I'm getting an echo. I'm on my phone. So let me know if you can hear me okay. Um, I'm not sure how much money we've collected, but um, donations, any donation that probably comes in, uh, that came in by uh, the 31st will go towards Brighter Summer. And the, we've provided sewing kits and solar chargers and many, many diapers, pull-ups, wipes um, for these families at risk and families in need with small children and for the youth that um, visit Home Plate, which is two places that in Beaverton and Hillsboro. Um, you probably all know about Home Plate, but it's a place where kids can go get a meal, have a shower, get personal care items and some direction for jobs um, or other social service needs. And I'm hoping that by next week we'll have maybe a picture of everything that has been donated. The church has really responded. We really thank you as the Social Com Concerns Committee. Um, those are the things that people can't buy on food stamps. And the homeless kids um, seem to have a need. Home Plate gives us a list and we try to fill their needs. They've always they've also been giving some um, small food baskets to people um, as an extra little project. So if you have and any other ideas, let us know. And you're willing to take more donations. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a constant need for home plate and then through um, Union Gospel and LifeWorks, we're working with families at risk. Or um, homeless family or maybe soon to be homeless sounds like an aspect of the five thousand to me thank you thank you for all that have contributed thank you for all that have chased down funds and uh, found creative ways to share god's abundance um, yes this is kareen and i was just uh, thinking of a day years ago that we celebrated children. We had an all-day festival at church, just celebrating the life of all our children. And it was a great, great day. I wish we could do that again. Well, let's we'll put you in charge, Corinne. <laughs> there you go. You speak up, you get put in charge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'd like to invite um, anyone listening, that if you, there's another way to share, uh, to Portland uh, Police Bureau Sunshine Division. Um, we're walking with our uncle today at Dunaway Park, and all contributions towards his walk to being 100 years old next Saturday 
go to the Portland Sunshine Division because they are very much in need. Uh, she's raised over $80,000, and not one penny of that's going towards administrative. It's all going to feed families. So if you want to join us and walk with us at 11 o'clock, if you want to donate, all, all money goes to Sunshine Division. And his name is Bud Lewis. Thank you, Diane. I saw something in, in email traffic. Reynolds, are you still here with us? Um, connected with the Union Gospel Mission. Yeah, I'm here. About that. Yeah, so um, I had got an email from Union Gospel Mission about a month ago, and they said, uh, hey, are there any, um, or could the church use any funds to help its members as a result of the COVID crisis? And um, uh, I, I, I thought to myself, well, geez, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not as well connected as some others. So um, I reached out uh, to the church and we got some write-ups on some families um, through social concerns and others that uh, did have a need. And we were able to get $2,500 that UGM uh, Union Gospel Mission got through a Murdoch grant. Uh, and so that money came in, that went out to some families. Um, they were very grateful. We were very grateful. And then um, we get another email from UGM. They said, could you use some more? And we, of course, said yes. Uh, and so uh, Social Concerns met, and through the Families in Need program, they came up with uh, some additional folks and uh, some of the money went to some of the people that got it from the first round too. And so that went out to various members and families in need uh, of the church. And um, that, uh, that, uh, that money's um, on its way. I don't think it's arrived yet, but uh, there's more money on its way for that. So we're very blessed to, to have that reciprocal kind of relationship with Union Gospel Mission. Um, we give them money and apparently they give us money. So uh, very pleased with how that worked out. Uh, and obviously they're a very worthy organization and our affiliation with them um, uh, is uh, beneficial to us both. So anyway, that's, uh, that, that happened. Thanks, Reynolds. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity at the, the end of this message to get into um, pairs and just do a little creative imagining. You might uh, take off from where we were already at in, in a couple of these examples. Uh, maybe something else has come to mind where you could respond to this story. And I wonder... Um, I wonder if this miracle, this miracle is more than a one or two shot thing uh, way back when. I wonder if this could stimulate and inspire us in the 21st century to um, exercise these miracles. The, the miracle is all about recognizing the abundance of God's provision and the creativity of sharing it. Can we imagine a time when all will be fed, that uh, we won't be seeing a video of flies flying around a bowl of r dirty rice and kids are happily shoving it into their mouths? Can we imagine a time we'll all have clean water instead of drudging up some mucky, dirty stuff to bring home to wash with and even to prepare food with? Can we imagine a time when there will be sanitary bathrooms anywhere that people can use so that they won't get the disease that comes um, with open waste? There are groups even now working towards these goals, the kingdom of heaven on earth. Could we in our economics, our politics and our religion let go of our selfishness and our fear of scarcity and work together to feed and care for the planet? I don't think that's beyond the power of God and our imagination. That's simply practicing generosity or goodness as some translations put it when they list the fruit of the spirit. Evidence that God's abundance 
And our imagination, our faith in that abundance is a powerful force for good, for healing, for thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now there's a, a couple of questions there. Where is their abundance? And how can we share it? And we could come up with some ideas. There you go. Yep. <laughs> know where pastor went so we will continue with the prayers confident of your care and helped by the holy spirit we pray for the church the world and all who are in need you take resources that appear to be meager Bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rain in places of drought and protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy. Oops. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone. Somebody's <laughs> zooming. <laughs> yeah. 
In this meal of bread and wine, you give us love, O oh God. We are grateful. We are grateful. So we rest in the promises of this meal as we remember on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. You give us your body, you give us this bread, brought forth from the earth, warmed by the sun, broken in community, to become our body as we become your body. It is good. You give us your life blood, you give us this wine, nourished in the rain's waters, ripened on the vine, poured out, overflowing for all to become our love as we become your love. It is sweet. It is sweet. I invite you to join together in the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. When you share the bread, you may say to yourself or one another, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Shattered by the fall, broken and forgotten, feeling lost and all alone. Summoned by the king to the master's court, lifted by the savior and cradled in his arms. I was carried to the table Seated where I don't belong Carried to the table Swept away by His love Cause I was carried to the 
perfect place to do it. Jade, and maybe also away from traffic noise um, so you can hear each other. <laughs> yeah, well, there's no traffic in here. I'm in. Sometimes. Yeah. There you go. Well, should we, uh, are there any f further announcements? You want something to say? I was just going to share with you all. Uh, join together on the bold print parts. In this Sabbath rest, we notice the earth. Good. Good. Our bodies. Very good. good. One another. Feel love. God. Ever. Be still and know that I am God. We pray that this Sabbath rest will keep us in rhythms of restoration on paths of right relationships, in the joyful movements of justice. Be still and know that I am God. We join together and it is well with my soul.
creator may the peace of jesus the wounded healer and the joy of the holy spirit giver of all life surround and encourage you now and in all ways thanks be to god